Hello students, Mr. Mink coming to you live from my parents' house uh, for a couple of reasons. I uh, love to look at all of the pictures of myself and my brother around my parents' house. I know, we're pretty cute. Uh, but also, uh, multiple other reasons I'm here. I was able to take the 3D printers from school. Some of you uh, were on the Google Meet where I showed you that I had the 3D printer set up on the dining room table so I can use their electricity and I can also eat their food. Those are the two big reasons I'm at my parents house. Uh, and what I'm doing is I got an idea from some friends and also news articles, designs on the websites, uh, all about the PPE equipment, personal protective equipment that uh, hospitals, nursing homes, police officers, first responders, pretty much all the essential workers uh, are utilizing. And uh, these files have come from all over, uh, people I used to work with in other tech programs. And so I wanted to see what our printers could do. Unfortunately, our printers are a little smaller than most that are required. Uh, so I'm gonna take you through the steps from start to where I am now. So this whole program started uh, April 1st is when I started this conversation with my immediate supervisor and the building principals at the Tri Building to see if I could get these machines here. And we are currently uh, at April 23rd, uh, which is the Thursday that uh, we are going through this process. So 22 days have and what happened is first getting approval to get all the machines. So I have all three machines here and uh, able to get those here. It took about a week for approval, getting into the building, making sure we followed all the specific regulations that were needed. Uh, and then as I mentioned, we had designs come from other websites and other organizations. So this was a design that was decided on for face shields. As you can tell, when I plug all of my information in about the machines that we're using, our 3D printers are in a print area of eight inches by seven inches. These frames, there's a reason it's highlighted red, need to be on an eight inch by eight inch plate. So we are clearly a little smaller than what's needed. So what I had to do in my first attempts here is I went in and I actually scaled this design down and I went just trying it, right? I tried 99, still red. So I got down to 92 and I was able to print these successfully. However, when I go through and do this, I have a lot of settings that I need to change based on the material I'm using. There's a bunch of materials you could use. We are using PLA, that's what we've been printing with. Uh, supports, there's no support system in here. It's not raised up in any way. The raft is the first layer that a 3D printer can print. I have always had success printing without a raft. I keep the standard settings and basically what you're doing is if you want to go faster, when you click on the faster area, it increases your layer height and your speeds. Okay, so standard, I have smaller layer heights if I go high for a slower one. And this is supposed to increase the resolution, the clarity, how detailed the print is. So I'm gonna stick with standard, and one of the things is when I was doing the face shield, I did all my different prototypes. I documented temperature, 1.0, 2.0, so these are my prototypes down the side here, and this is what I was going off of day one. Also on day one, when I successfully printed the design, and by day one, I mean day one of printing, it's definitely not day one of this entire project. Uh, because we took about a week to get the machines here. 
So I was able to successfully print a 92% scale model of the face shields that you see a lot in uh, the news. So in doing that, I had to also change how I would create the face shield. And most of you do not remember overhead projectors, but they had a transparency sheet, clear transparency. And what I did is I took the three hole punchers and I had to modify them. So I have two holes over here that get punched, two holes here that get punched. And then the center doesn't allow a lot of movement. So I have to do that with a single hole punch. Once I punch those four holes on either end, I, I line up my sheet. I make my mark using this very fancy template. And then I go ahead and use that single hole punch to get those two center punches. Once I'm done with that, I can clip it in on all the sides and I get that face shield. So again, this is a 92% scale. It takes about 45 minutes to print the frame and then about two to three to make the transparency face shield. Unfortunately, since it's only a 92% scale, I can't collaborate with all the organizations that are printing them and they're printing all across the Northeast in the capital region and everywhere else. So where did I go next? 